Zach Blunt, um, on our show, Chow Feed Specialist for Green Animal Nutrition. I'm here with John Gevlinger. We're at the Austin County Fair Fairgrounds in Belleville, Texas. Um, we're here to do a showmanship demo. We're going to do a quick little demo and answer some questions for you today. I'm going to turn it over to John, and he'll lead you in the discussion. Hi, guys. I'm excited to be here. We've got an audience here, too, so they're going to be asking some questions as well. I encourage you guys to um, ask some questions in the comments below. We've just concluded our daily care segment. I want to cover a little bit on showmanship real quick. First thing I want to talk about is uh, equipment when it comes to showmanship. We've got a couple things. The biggest thing for me when we're coaching kids is we need to start with the right equipment. Where a lot of kids kind of have some trouble is a lot of times we don't have the right equipment. So, when we're trying to figure out show stick length or size, a lot of times, if you come up here, sweetheart, a lot of times we go to the show supply trailer and we just try to figure out which one fits the exhibitor the best. And to me, where we do the best, thank you, where, we, where we're the best is, we'll come over here, Brindley, Brindley, if you want to bring your steer up here. We're way better off, I think, by turning them up this way, coming on the right side. Finding a show stick that pull fits the cap. So pull them up here. If we, if we find a show stick that fits the length of that cap, it's better than fitting the height of the exhibitor. So, for instance, this might fit the exhibitor, but it's way too short if you're showing a big red hat. Does that make sense? So, for this cap, this show stick, might be okay, this one's probably more ideal. It's about the right size. The reason I like this show stick the best is when we're showing this calf, and if we have to reach back and grab a foot, a lot of times what happens is we reach back here, and if we don't have a long enough show stick, we start pulling this head back around to us, and the first thing it does is it starts pointing that shoulder out. Does that make sense? If we give a little kid a little show stick like this, and he's trying to move the back foot back in, he's going to start, he or she's going to start pulling this head around to him. And then what happens is that calf's going to start moving. It's going to poke out that shoulder a little bit. So I like to give kids a show stick that matches the calf, not that. Okay? So the next thing that I think is really important is to make sure that show halter fits good. We've got three different sizes of, uh, there's actually four different sizes of show halters. Show halters all adjust. You can see right here that they adjust well. For different stages, whether they're big, small, like big red heifers are going to need more like a large show halter. They adjust a little bit, but they don't just adjust across this nose. So a lot of times where cattle really start fighting that halter in a ring and you start seeing them shake their head a bunch, 90% of the time it's because that halter doesn't fit super well across their nose. So we want this show halter to fit underneath those eyes, but not up in their eyes. And we don't want to have a lot of slack. So a lot of times if that show halter is too big, it'll come down and it'll start pinching around your nose. So we want this to fit snug up underneath their eyes. So when you start putting pressure, when you start putting pressure around their nose, it starts to hurt them just a little. So we want it up here where it's real stout on their skull. Now, the other reason we want that to fit real well is we want to have a really close, close grip on that calf. When we're holding that calf, I like kids to hold them real close to that, to the side of their head. Back in the day, they used to show cattle and they'd hold them like this. Now we like to hold them like this. Sometimes you see cattle and they'll kind of be swishing back and forth, they'll move their butt back and forth. If we can get where they quit moving their head, up here they can move their head back and forth a bunch. If we get right here, we've got control of that head where they can't move it as much, and it kind of keeps the rest of that body in line. Does that make sense? So it's real important to have a really close grip. I like those kids to be real close, almost touching the calf when they're holding that. While we're talking about that, I want to talk about hand placement. I like the under the hand grip. 
right here, we've got a lot of control right here. Right here, we can't get as close to that head. So I really like those kids to be real close and having that hand underneath. Yes, sir. Do you have a question? So, real quick, I'm going to hand this off. we have for a lead strap is this sure hand lead and where I really like it is for younger kids smaller kids they have a little bit more leverage if you can imagine a lot of times those little kids are trying to reach up and hold the head up that's above their head and it takes all the pressure what normally would be on your your knuckle it takes that pressure off and it actually puts it on this little handle the other thing this does is it's got a little cushion to it it's bigger around where you have something you can really grab onto. So for, for novice kids, for younger kids, for smaller kids, I wish we had this when I started showing. A lot of times we'll start kids out with this the first couple years. Once they get a little bigger, stronger, feel more comfortable, we'll transition them over to a regular show halter. But this will give kids a lot of confidence when they're just starting out. One last thing on equipment is we talked about this a little bit in daily care, but just to recap, we have two different styles of comb. We got the plastic and we got the metal. I really like to send kids into the show ring with a plastic tooth comb. If these fall on the ground and a calf steps on them or you step on them, we're going to hurt that plastic comb, but that comb isn't going to stick up into your, your calf's hoof. This is a lot safer to use in the show ring. The other thing is a lot of times we put these combs in our back pocket like we discussed. And if a calf bumps into you, it's going to hurt that comb, but it's not going to hurt you. Where this one's a metal one, and it can bump into your backside and really hurt you. That's a little bit about the equipment. I'm going to steal Brindley's calf back here again. I'm going to follow up here, Brindley. Now, one thing that I think is really important is where you scratch your calf and the speed at which you scratch your calf. So, what I like to do is there's two places you can scratch your calf to kind of calm them. It's right here behind their front leg or right up here on their chest point. I think we've kind of transitioned into scratching a little more on them in terms of their chest floor. The biggest thing I want you to kind of keep in mind is, and one of the questions we had in our, our Facebook comments was, how to keep a calf that's really jittery and wants, doesn't want to stand still in a show ring, how to keep them where they'll stay a little more still. So that was Katie's question. It was, okay. how can we calm our calf in the ring if it gets too jumpy or is fascinated by every moving thing? And that's a common issue, especially at the first show you go to. And the biggest thing that I see where cattle really want to move around a bunch and they're kind of wiggling back and forth, just like this one here, sometimes at their first show, you, you're going to have that. This super common problem. The other thing I see is a lot of times not only is the calf nervous, but the kid's nervous too. And the first thing we start to do when we get nervous is we start scratching more and we scratch more often we start to just scratch, 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 scratch. Well, what that does, it almost fires up that calf more. If you can really kind of keep an eye on, I need to make long, slow strokes. And sometimes we even count them out. We go, one, two, and then we'll scratch again. One, two. Because a lot of times you get out there and you just don't even realize you're doing it. You're over here scratching, and that calf's like getting worked up too. So the more you can remain relaxed and keep that show stick moving a little slower, that really helps. So just kind of concentrate on show stick speed. You just come hold this one real quick, friendly. The next thing I want to kind of concentrate on or talk about is where do we stand in relation to that calf? This is a common question because I feel like there's so many different ways of doing it. And again, I can't emphasize enough that showmanship is, there's a lot of personal preference. There's a lot of people that do it one way and there's a lot of people that do it another way. Again, the way I, I'm gonna explain to you the reasons why we do it the way we do it. 
So, what I like to do, and this is something that Dave Allen has really shown me how to teach really well, is I like kids to stand in front of their eyes or in front of their nose. So I like them in front of this, and I like them to have their belt buckle pointed at their shoulder. So, what happens is, a lot of times, kids that we're coaching will either get too far this way, or they'll get too far this way. You know, sometimes I think right now, it's kind of a fad for kids to be way out here in front of them. The problem with that is, it looks good, and you can really silhouette that calf off. The reason they're doing that is we really, from this side, from this profile, this will show it better. We really want to silhouette that cap off. So we want to be up here for a really silhouette them off. When we get in here, we start kind of distorting their neck and their head, and our body is blocking some of that silhouette of them. So we want to get up here and silhouette them off. But what happens is, if we get too far up here, we can't actually see those back legs. From where I'm standing right now, so, what we like to coach kids to do is just always be for sure in front of their eyeballs on the profile, and maybe even in front of their nose, have their belt buckle pointed at their shoulder, because then what we can do is we, we silhouetted that cap off, but we can also, with just the tip of our head, I can tell if he's moved those back feet. What happens a lot of times is a calf can move a back foot without you ever noticing it. Does that make sense? So if we're up here, we got to be able to be where we can see and constantly checking where those feet are. Can you come up here again, Brindley? Thank you. So along with your position in relation to you and the calf, another thing I think is really important is one thing we've all, for a lot of years, we've coached kids to keep their eye on the, on the judge. Has anybody ever said that to a kid or heard that? I know I have a bunch of times, and I think that that is really important to a point. Where I think we need to be more or less is we need to focus on ring awareness. So what I mean by that is sometimes kids have their eye on the judge, but their back legs are crossed. So. If that judge is on the other end of the ring, we need to make sure that you're honed in on your steer, that you got him set up, but you don't need to be looking at the judge if he's evaluating cattle 10 calves down from you. Just be having an awareness of where he's at, and when he starts making his way back towards you, then you can kind of zero back in on the judge. Make sure you've got your calf set. But you always want to be bouncing back and forth. You want to kind of have an idea of where the calf is in front of you, you want to have an idea where the judge is, and you want to have an idea where your calf's feet place is. So keeping your eye on the judge is super important, but we've got several other things that are important when we're talking about that as well. Okay, so again, just for our Facebook live view, I just want to reintroduce myself. I'm John Gevlinger. I'm on the Honor Show Child Live page today. We're here in Belleville, Texas. We're at the Austin County Fairgrounds, and we've just completed um, the daily care segment. We're going over some showmanship points before we get into our contest here in a little bit. So, now that's covered kind of some of the basics in terms of the right equipment, where we want to stand in relation to the cap. One thing I want to cover now is a lot of times kids, the first thing we, they do is when we, want to, when we give them a show stick, they want to start poking feet, right? That's the first thing to do. In fact, one thing I like to do when we're first coaching kids on how to show is we we don't even have a show stick in their hand. A lot of times, we'll just make them start leading those calves, just have them lead them, and we'll introduce the show stick later. The reason we do that is we like to lead cattle into it. Have you ever heard of walking cattle into it? So there's two reasons we walk cattle into it, and I'm gonna just demonstrate it here in a minute. But there's two reasons we do that. It's the most efficient way to set them up. It's really quick. The other reason we do that is it's the way they look the most natural. So when we walk them into it, their weight 
is evenly proportioned on all four corners, and we can do it really quick, okay? And blocking them into it, we talked about in daily care how cattle, daily care and nutrition, we talked about cattle are creatures of habit. When we talk about showmanship, showmanship happens at home. So it's you building that relationship with your calf and your calf responding well to you. So when we're looking at getting ready for a show, a lot of times we'll start a couple months out doing showmanship and we'll practice for 20 minutes a day, maybe three, four, five times a week if we can. But when I talk about cattle being creatures of habit, we can actually train them where they'll lead and stop 90% of the time in the correct position. But you have to do that homework at home. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about leading them into it, and then I'm gonna talk about when we do have to move a foot, how we can do that by pulling and pulling, using different pressure points, and doing it the most natural we can. Real quick, I think yep. you touched on this a little earlier ago, but Natalie wants to know tips for a steer who swings away from the judge, who doesn't like anyone in his blind spot. Yes, okay, so that's a good question. Did y'all hear that question? Tips on calves that wanna swing away from the judge? So this is an easy fix at home. If you have enough time, what we do is we like to practice showmanship in, in at least groups of two if you have the opportunity. But if you could have a parent come out and handle that calf, so a lot of times a judge will come up and they'll handle this calf. They'll feel it on their top and over their ribs and in their flank. You pra we practice that at home too. So one of us is kind of the mock judge. That'll really help if you want to come up on different angles of that camp. You just come up here, come up here a little quicker. We'll go around the calf in different areas. And all that does is get that calf used to where he'll stand still. And you can tell Ridley's done a good job at home and we've helped just handle that calf. Anything we can do to make that scenario like a show at home really helps us. So I hope that helps, Natalie. That, is that the right name? Yep. So Natalie, if you can have one of your brothers or your sisters, aunt, uncle, egg teacher, if you can have them come in and just handle that calf a little bit, that's really gonna help get that calf used to having somebody walk around them, get them in a blind spot, kind of change up the scenario a little bit, and that calf's gonna get used to that, okay? So. I'm going to kind of demonstrate the heat going into it. I'm going to do it straight ahead, and I'm going to do it straight this way. What I want you to focus on, and he may not do it every time, but I'm really focusing on his back two. Morgan, will you bring yours up here next to him, please? I'm working, I'm focused on his back two feet. If I need to move a foot, I want it to be the two closest feet that are closest to me, which are going to be his front two. So when I'm leading them into it, I really want to focus on those back two. When I stop a cat, what I'm going to do is there's a position that we want to stop this cat. We want to stop this cat, and this will work here. We want to stop this cat. question about how that's set up yep. um, when your steer is in profile position like that feet offset do you have to switch the offset back leg to whichever side the judge is on so that's a really good question the reason we call this the show side on this side 
is because 90% of the time the judge is going to be on that side of the cap. If the 10% that the judge spends on this side probably isn't, by all he's going to do is he's maybe going to walk behind this calf, and by the time you switch his feet, the judge is already going to be past you. And one of the most attra unattractive positions you can be in is moving a foot. So I coach kids to leave it there unless a judge comes over here and starts camping out and he's evaluating that calf for a considerable amount of time on this side. I leave them there because usually the judge just makes a circle and comes back around. Does that make sense? So, again, I want you to kind of focus on when I'm leading them into this, I want you to kind of focus on how I'm trying to stop these hind two legs, okay? And then if we need to, I'm gonna go over how to move that with their halter on those front two. use a little pressure back on my show halter here just twisting my wrist and I'm gonna tell him which foot to move I put hardly any pressure on that I was just telling him which foot I want him to move if I want that to come forward I'm gonna put a little pressure forward and I'm gonna move that foot forward Does that make sense now if we have a hold of that halter up here and we're holding it like this we can't use that pressure without moving the whole head that makes sense? So that's the other reason we like kids to be right down here. Choke, we always say choke up on the halter, kind of like you do in baseball. Choke up on the halter. What I mean by that is just get up here real close, okay? So we've got two questions real quick on this stance. Michelle wants to know if heifers are set up the same way as steers. That's re real good question. So typically, like when we were drawing on that board over there, sometimes a heifer, and if you can kind of show my feet, Sometimes a heifer, since they don't need to be as masculine looking, we like to just set them a little bit more offset. There's two reasons we like to do that too. When you set them offset, the reason we do that is on a steer or a heifer, it'll kind of square up. You want to come grab this calf for me, Brindley? Just kind of lean towards that thing. What that does is it'll square up that hip just a little bit. If we've got that calf like this, on a heifer, we can square up that hip even more. The other thing it does is it exposes her underline. So on a heifer, we need to see her udder development, and so it just shows off that belly line a little bit better, and it's gonna square up her hip a little bit more. So yes, to answer your question, on a heifer, we're gonna maybe do it a little bit more exaggerated offset, and maybe not as wide. Both cattle, both steers and heifers, need to be offset but a steer needs to be wider than a heifer and a little less offset. And then Kristen wants to confirm that the front two feet are not square. They're slightly offset. Correct. And what I mean by that, what was your name? Kristen. Kristen. So what I mean by that is the front two feet, if you just picture this, my legs look skinnier here than they do here. And all we're doing is we want to keep them a little bit offset 
just so y'all can see here too. If we keep them like this, they look like one leg. If we offset them, it looks like two bigger legs. That makes sense? So every, kind of think of everything from the profile. We don't really want to see a gap between those legs like we do the back ones, but we will, I like to see them a little offset. And again, every calf is going to be set a little bit different. There might be something that your calf has that we need to tweak on a little bit. But for general consensus, 98% of them, that's how we like to set them up. Any other quick questions? So again, my name's John Gevlinger. Um, we are here at the Train Like a Champion show clinic in Belleville, Texas. I was excited to join you on our Facebook Live page here with Honor Show Chow. If you have any questions, feel free as you're viewing this video to type them in uh, the comment box. We'd be glad we're gonna go back in. We're gonna answer every question. We're glad you joined us. We're gonna get on with the rest of our clinic. Thank you.